I'm good. I'm good for now. Sorry. Will you will you want to stay a little bit Like about 15 more minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I basically um was I basically I wasn't a believer. I was just on the campus. You know? what it is, huh? You know? <laughs> and I'm reading I'm reading Yingma O Africa's African Holistic Health. I'm looking at the mental nether. I'm reading, you know, destruction of a civilization. You know, I'm reading Stone and Legacy. You know, sitting out at night for hours chopping it up. All of a sudden, all of a sudden. Uh, I, I kind of grew up in the church, but I, 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 I had liturgy, but I didn't have a gospel. So I heard the gospel. I, I, and I, I'm the dude out, outside, out front of the student union wiping Christians out, like in front of the whole thing. Like, right, I mean, mopping the floor with Christians. So the undeniable might of the gospel, Romans 1 16, the gospel is the power of God and the salvation. Heard the gospel. That thing changed my whole framework. But then I was struggling because I wasn't disciple yet. So I was saved, but I wasn't growing in the knowledge of the truth, you know, with help. And so as I began getting disciple, I still, for the 5% of just hit me up, the God, you're the God's going to call at you, man. You're going to talk to me about this. So I'm, you know, so, so you know, I, you know, so I'm hitting them back. I said, I already know about Clarence 13X and, you know, I'm, you know, I'm busting back at him. But I didn't have, like, the different things that we got so much information now. It's just, it, I mean, it, it just doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And so, and so I just started leading, I was leading, I was standing in the student union and preaching 30 people were surrounding me. People were coming to Christ. The supernatural change of people, people getting saved, five percent of tells me when I graduated he got good. So, so long story short, fast forward, I always had kind of this this black thing with me because of my pre-conversion experience. When this happened again, I was like, okay, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, this is gonna be different this time. So we we just started over the years putting on armor, you know, just getting in them church fathers, you know, reading Irenaeus, finding out that the word Trinity came from a black man, you know, and, and, and how they use the hypostatic union was defended by a short, wide-nosed black man at the Council of Nicaea, you know, called Athanasius, you know. Then I'm finding out about perpetual, <laughs> I'm finding out about perpetual infelicity, you know what I'm saying? The, the first African marvels, you know. So we, you know, I'm finding out about all this, and then I'm like, oh, Psalm 82, where they used to hit me up about the gods, that's actually, yeah, the divine council. So I'm in the divine council, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm getting into that, I'm like, nah, so I'm at the five percent, he said, we all gods. I said, but you're gonna fall like a man, the sixth of the verse <laughs> 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 so, so um, I said, but it's not talking about you. And then, then from there, it just kept going. And then now, into my pastoring, I've weaved into it the need to restore <clears throat> Adam lost. What we've lost was lost in Genesis 3. It just finds its way into our blackness. What have we lost? Our dignity. Our significance and our identity. So now... I'm preaching a gospel that restores that, but instead of Imago Day, we're not going, God is not restoring us in the Imago Day. He, he's upgrading it to the Imago Christi. That's Romans 8, 29. For I predestined you to be conformed to the image of Christ. That means before everything was created, Christ was the ultimate image of what God wanted in human beings. And so from there, working from that, and working from that space, that, and, and, and helping blacks to know that yes, your identity is found in Christ, but God made you as a black person. That's right. So he's not just redeeming your soul, he's redeeming your blackness. But, but let, me, let me ask you this, Pastor. Yeah. Now, Does that now. make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, let me, let, let me go back to the point we were talking about earlier. A lot, what we're seeing right now, to me, what you're saying is more of a kingdom assignment and agenda mm -hmm. because you can't not talk about the kingdom without dealing with ethnicity. Absolutely. I don't understand. I don't understand people's concept like you, you broke it down. Mm -hmm. But... I think there has to be some kind of ground that opens up for apologists and the, what do you call it, the Hebrew awakening, that, you know, label it awakening now, I guess. Um, but, but there's some things that are, re that are relevant on both sides, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and at some point, there has to be some kind of platform to be able to bring that difference with balanced yeah, people yeah, yeah, uh, to the table 
that can say, you know what, we, let's discuss this. Because mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no shame or fear in the truth. Mm -hmm. if, if, you know, what happened, it, let's, let's sit at the table and, and come to some conclusions. And I think that's what we're trying to work towards Absolutely. at this point is uh, bringing people like yourself um, and other people that are knowledgeable, you know, about the kingdom, about the text, yeah, about yeah, history, yeah. and say, okay, you identify as that, okay, so let's sit down and let's, let's walk through it. Mm -hmm. Let's walk through it. I, th I think we need that. We need that. Because yeah. what, you, have, you have a following of people. Say again. I say you have a following yeah. of people that, that see both sides. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, a lot of times they're pulled. You know, from uh, from from either end, like yeah, extremes yeah. or not extremes, or certain yeah, yeah. things that may be little bits of truth and some bits of truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so your job as a pastor is to try to focus, get them to see mm -hmm. the bigger picture. You know, mm -hmm. your shoe is the way that just focus yeah, yeah, on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, you, you have to address certain things that that okay, may be true. I think I think that's something that we, you know, look to build. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the things, like I, like I, I, I forgot who. I think it was, you probably brought it up earlier when we were talking before everybody came over. Is because this wave of the Israelite movement is new. Mm. I would I, this is what I would suggest. I humbly suggest this. I would suggest there be some doctrinal unanimity right. among those who identify as Israelites before they try to dialogue with another community about their beliefs. Because and and I'm, you know, people will say, well, there are different denominations of churches. That's, but the difference is the church has had 2,000 years to work on this doc. Right, right, right. You know, um, I, I don't know what timeline we'd say. Would we say since William Seymour, mm -hmm. you know, the slaves in the, the mid, you know, 850s? Or would we say 69, what the camps would say when they're waking? Whenever we would say, <coughs> you, you got to, let's just say 150 years of doctrinal discovery. Mm -hmm. You can't go to, like, like I was I was challenging some some other brothers and sisters who say, I'm a, I'm a Christian Israelite. I was like, I hear y'all, and I, I said, I don't have a problem with you identifying as an Israelite. I said, do that. So do that. I, I, that's not the argument. I said, my thing is, um, don't fold your arms, man. He just fold your arms. No, 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 no. But no, but, but I would say, <laughs> there needs to, like, there needs to, and this is, you know, writing. You got to have central theologians in the Israelite community. What's your Christology? Like, because if you talk, you say that, because yeah. if you talk, no, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But, uh, yeah. Brother of ours, he, well, he was a dean of chapel down at Bethune Cookman. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, David Allen. David Allen, Dr. David Allen. That sounds familiar for some reason. But. And he, he was suggesting that. He was suggesting <laughs> the same thing, that there needs to be some type of curriculum or some type of solid uh, rubrics mm -hmm. that instructs people and puts people on the same path and have an understanding of what it is that we believe in. Absolutely. So they properly defend it. Because the other thing is this, not even just for defense, because defense only comes when there's, there's resistance to what you centrally say you believe. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, because I, I talked to one guy, he's saying Jesus Christ didn't eternally exist. Oh, I'm like, so where you getting that from? Mm -hmm. You know, that he didn't eternally exist. You know, a, a, an Israelite uh, brother. He's saying, you know, and so I'm saying, so talk to me about when he began existing. Where's he created being? Defend that. Then I talk to this other one, they'll say, well, I believe he's God. And then I have another one that says, I just believe he's a human being. And so it's kind of like, that's, those are not, like, you can, like for us, you can't even say you're a Christian functionally if you're not believing in the deity of Christ. You know? I got you, Elf. And, and, so, and so what's so important about that is having some fundamental unanimity beyond with the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? You know, I think, I think that's cool, but that's not going to... Ethnicity never kept a person's soul. Oh, oh right, oh, right, so, exactly. And I'm not yeah, saying y'all yeah, yeah, saying that, yeah, yeah. but I'm saying as 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 we start as the soteriology starts getting built out, mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of challenges with what is sanctification because of the relationship between the law of Moses, the law of Christ. How do they relate? What's the continuity, mm -hmm. discontinuity? Mm -hmm. You know what? You know, is there's 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 1,050 laws of Christ. There's 613 laws of Moses. You know, how do we deal with the civic law? 
How do we deal with the ceremonial law? How do we deal with the moral law? Right. Because sometimes I hear guys, they'll say, I affirm the moral law, but then, you know, I'll see ceremonial stuff. So I ask a brother, I say, so when you have a wet dream, what do you do? Now, do, do, do you go outside of the city <laughs> until the evening? You know what I'm saying? Like when your wife goes on her time of the month, she got to get that. You, you know what I'm saying? Are, are you are you doing that? What's your view on marriage? Are you polygamous? Now then, if you got, if you want to have elders, now are you going to call your leaders captains? Now I'm not saying y'all do that. No, no. I'm not saying y'all do that. Or are they pastors? So yeah, yeah. Would, would it be safe to say that there are legitimate? To the better charter right discrepancies in the interpretation of scripture as well as the presentation of scripture. absolutely, absolutely. And so, when, so when asking that question, I'm asking the question because it's like, you know, those things have to be born down. Now, you have like Dalton wrote a basic kind of deal, um, and you have I can't remember the other book. He's he says he's kind of possible. I can't remember the guy. I have that book in my queue. Um, nah, I'm gonna pull it up while we're talking, but um. It's some guys that, are, that that have written, but it's not a lot of. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about it. Now. We'll do it after the. <laughs> but but it's not any. But none of that's doctrinal. It's more historical, and so um, and so it's more historical writing. Even uh, Rudolph Windsor is historical, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so, but there is no doctrine doctrinal leaders that everybody says. I rock with them. I'm talking about the ones, the, the Israelites that would say, you're saved by grace through faith alone, mm -hmm. in Christ alone. But I'm an Israelite. I believe in the deity of Christ, but I'm an Israelite. You know, I believe in the hypostatic union, but I'm an Israelite. I believe in biblical ecclesiology, but I'm an Israelite. You know, I believe in the Trinity, but I'm an Israelite. Mm -hmm. You know, I may not call it that. You may have a historical difference with that. But I, I mean, those things. So if we're saying that was there, then is it different than Christian doctrine? And I'm just adding the Israelite identity? Or are there different things in relation to... You know, and somebody has to make that clear. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. I think, I, think that, I think in the process of time, those are things that, like, I, 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 my, I have a conviction that I believe that when the shoe returns, when the side returns, he told that I want to, I want to, I want you to occupy till I come. And yeah, 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 yeah. We're working and occupying, we're seeking. Yeah, yeah. And occupying, we're trying to rediscover or come to the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. And I think that is sometimes the process that becomes taboo almost. It's like to to question the position or how we need to approach a present day challenge like we're talking about tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that causes disruption, but I, disruption. But I think it's from the most high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think these disruptions and we from the most high that men shrink back from mm -hmm. because of the cost. Mm -hmm. You know when we count the cost. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Yeah man. It's good dialoguing with y'all yes, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Let's all jump in a thick together. Y'all mind, you know? No, no, no. I'm going to stir up some stuff out here. Stir it up. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in there? Yes, sir. Right. We in there. There it is. All right. Come on. <laughs> well, Pastor, we're going to continue to build. I think, I think that, you know, I know you reached out to a couple of brothers mm -hmm. and, and that I know you're working with. And to me, to me, it's essential because when I can identify, we can identify with your background. We can identify with that. So to us, it's not the, that extreme yeah, yeah, that yeah. some things you saw. We, by the spirit, we can say, okay, we understand where we're going. Yeah. But we've also identified, okay, certain things got to be true. We've got to reconcile Absolutely. something between the chosen people, the, the, the gospel, the, the, the future, the kingdom. These things got to be reconciled. And then the whole idea, does my Hebrew Israelite identity mean kingdom hierarchy? No. All of those, and I'm not saying you okay, I got you. that. I got I'm you. Saying, I got you. Like, there has to be, like, it's, cause there, there's, some, there's some verses people got to work, we need to work through. <laughs> <laughs> in order to make that work, you know, and so I'm like, I'm like, okay, you know, make that work, you know, and so, and so I'm saying, but I'm saying, uh -huh. though, but there has to be, but that's it, but how we view people uh -huh. is an essential gospel issue. Yes, Absolutely. yes, yes, I agree, I agree. Absolutely. And, and, and so, and, I agree. And, and, but, if, but if we don't come to a, if, if we don't have a biblical anthropology, gotcha. you know what I'm saying, like, because we have to have a biblical anthropology of Israel, and of the nations. That's right. Mm, that's right. And, 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 but how does that relate to 
the gospel. That's right. And then, and, and, but you know, because because you, you know, it's so many. You know, and again, Christians can't talk. We got a lot too, but you got Tanakh only. Yeah. You know, you got Torah only. Yeah. Then you got you know, all the Bible. And the, uh, and the apocrypha, except when Paul doesn't agree with, <laughs> right. and then now Paul is not a letter, no, it's just a letter, because mm -hmm. it's a letter, it's not inspired, even though Peter, right. who you affirm as, and you listen to what he's saying, mm -hmm. but he, just the part about Paul not being, so gotcha, you know, gotcha, just, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, all, all those nuances, yeah, yeah, I would yeah, just yeah. say, in the end, it's just, uh, for me, I've learned to say, everybody has a position, but don't let every position be a doctor. Gotcha. So, by doing that, you know, I'm always taking open. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I think sometimes we're, you know, I really respect you, I mean, I come up from this position, but definitely come tonight to hear you, I'm like, wow, you know. Praise but God. I think Praise that um, you have to have these dialogues. Uh -huh. You can't be fearful about it. And if we disagree, mm -hmm. the gospel message better still be the central thing for everybody. Absolutely. And so, I mean, whether you believe you're Israelite or not, I would think that's the gospel message still got to be held. But we got to deal, deal with the past. We got to report, right? Mm -hmm. What you just said is, is so important. Mm -hmm. Paul said, I brought you first, a first importance. Da, 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 da. Like, that, like, it's rare, though. Like, people got to experience that. You say people from your persuasion saying that. Because I think a lot of people, because, of course, because of the camps, Stereotype, oh, what's yeah. your nationality? Yeah. Right, right, right. is more important right. than a first important. But see, and, and Pastor, I say this. And that's why I say stereotype. I didn't, you know, and I'll go I back. I'll yeah. go back to what you said. You don't want to dismiss what could be also prophetic from the Most High. So you got to take Absolutely. that time to say, okay, man, could this possibly? Could there possibly be something to this? And that's oftentimes something that could possibly be overlooked in the process of trying to, you know, gather through, get through the. Mm -hmm. Ethnicity challenges and things like that yeah, 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 is man is the Most High actually waking up a group of people. Like, he got yeah, yeah, yeah. he got it he got to go he got to go he got to go. Hey man, we appreciate it. It's a Facebook live. It's, it's a Facebook, Facebook live. live. Tag me in. All right, I got you. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. I like that. I like that. Hey, hey, hey get a pick, Louis. You got a pick? You got a pick? Hold on, let me let me uh. Take a picture. Rich. Oh, you did? You took one with your phone? No, no, no. That's with his phone. Oh. Take this picture. Come on, Mike. I agree to deal. What are we doing now? All right. Y'all hit me up on Facebook. I'll bring y'all. Our light skinned brother. That's right. That's right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You ain't leaving me out. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. They ain't ready yet. It's all right. Live, fam. Shalom, fam. Most high stab is hot. Now you can start, I tell everybody, you can start from Adam. But the problem is, once Adam's generation is judged, then you deal with Noah. Just talk, but it's just happening. Like, with, with, with the people, this talk. is what I was thinking about. Like when Mike started telling us about the things he's doing. Shalom fam, how y'all doing tonight? All right. uh, praise to the Most High. Um, we had the opportunity to be a part of a discussion about, you know, race relations in our time mainly around the church uh, and its role in, um, they can always go back and look at it, but to kind of, to deal with the unspoken truth about race in our society, especially around the church, as we would call it, the evangelicals, white evangelicals, of the blacks uh, in, in, in the ecclesiastical bodies, wherever we are, and how that voice has been silenced. You know, white churches have not done a good job with dealing with the issues. And he kind of brought us some testimonies about when, uh, you know, just dealing with Trayvon Martin at this particular church that we are. He, Trayvon Martin happened. Um, he talked about the atrocity that took place and this white pastor lost a hundred white people in his ministry. And so this pastor is willing to kind of go against the grain. And so he brought in Eric Mason to kind of deal with some things. And uh, we just happened to come, you know, we came to see and, uh, you know, all praise to the most high gave us an opportunity to dialogue with them. And if you see it on our channel, take, take a look at it. But uh, I know some of you all out there might be some have some concerns about our, our method and how we engage uh, Dr. Eric Mason. But, um, you know, we believe that our purpose is to bridge the gap in the misunderstanding between the Hebrew Israelite community and the Christian community. Um, we believe that um, there's a mandate and a call on Berea Council to be voices of distinction and to not be in such a hurry to beat our narrative because it's the most high. No man come to the father 
except the Ruach draws them in. And so we believe we have we, 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 the, you know, the, the wisdom and understanding should be the stability of our time. And so we're recognizing that there are very tactful ways that we're going to go about bringing in uh, the awakening as as we as we call it and um and so tonight if you get a chance to kind of watch our live feed with dr mason uh i want you to really just uh listen to what he had to say and 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 kind of you know don't take it as a grain of salt you know we'll hopefully this will be another opportunity to sit down with him and build but tonight was um uh, it was a trumpet whether you want to believe it or not uh eric mason man he went there he went in there and he said some things that were polarizing uh, the table that we sat at. There was some some white uh, Christians who were sitting at the table and that she was explaining about what she had heard. She said that was too much for her. All right. So uh, he didn't hold. He, he, he left no stone unturned. Yeah, he, he said some things that that needed to be said as far as the as far as the you know, church is concerned. Hey, Shalom. Ox. Yeah. So so we, we, we just got out of a, a, a session. Uh, with uh, Dr. Mason had a re really good dialogue at the end. And uh, as, as Lewis mentioned, um, a lot of our approach to this, we understand that this is the most high is doing. You can't, the awakening is happening and, and, and people are, are coming to the understanding in that process as most high is guiding them in that. And so um, we, we built great, had a great discussion and, and what needed to be said as far as the church world is concerned. I mean, he went there. He went there and and said some things to to as far as the Christendom world of them actually needing to address uh, certain issues. And it was quiet in the room for for a little minute. It was quiet, and he he and hold he he he, he, he held a few uh, punches back, but he went there and said some things that actually need to be said. So so uh, hey, we gonna call you, man. We gonna call you. Go ahead, nah, so just a little uh, little a bird's view of the facility tonight. Um, it's a church in Gainesville, Florida. Um, the pastor that, of this that, church, uh, we grew up um, with this pastor, Pastor Mike Pat, Pats. He was a youth pastor at the time when we were in a, a, a ministry here in Gainesville. And um, now he's the senior pastor of this church. And um, man, he, he's a real good brother, man. He has an initiative in his church, man, where he is raising reparations <laughs> for the black community. I mean, in his church right now, he has a fund where he's raising reparations for the atrocities that's happening in the black community. So, man, that's that's the type of person that he is. He's losing members because of his stance. And so, man, this is powerful. This is prophetic to see that the scripture said that the Gentiles will come to our light. Our light means our salvation, you know. And so, um, you know, uh, man, it's powerful, man. We Sometimes we don't understand how the Most High is going to perform his, his work um, right, but right. it's going to be glorious and we have to be patient. We are stewards of the mystery. So when we are, we are given a task to carry a mantle, it's not our job to force things. We have to allow the, uh, the opportune times and moments to seize, uh, to, to bring about the reformation that needs to take place, you know? And so, um, man, we just honored. We're honored to be here. I got, I got the rest of the ox over here. They, 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 they breaking bread. Red, you want, uh, out Reg is in the house. Shalom, shalom, fam. Man, it's it's a great time. I know, I know I, Brian didn't give y'all the 411, the rundown. <laughs> but let me tell y'all something. Yah <laughs> is making moves in the earth. Yes. And the glory of the kingdom is being seen himself. That disruption, right? Most high it's a divine disruption. Yeah, hey, I come on this side so we can see y'all face. Like, 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 okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, next, you, might, uh, say, you, get, you know, you're going to lie. Right, listen, Israelite brothers, don't trip now. Are y'all the price? Hey, hey, right? Cody. But I, I got to say this. Power to the people. I can't give it to Dr. <laughs> Eric Mason. I, he didn't sugarcoat some things. And I seen people, spirits, like, you know, white folks, spirits, like, oh, we got to address some things. And so, um, you know, he coming right along. We, we had a good dialogue, 20-minute co conversation. You know, we ain't trying to go in there and, Oh, we we get kiss your feet. We ain't doing that. We led by the spirit. You know the words that the Messiah spoke. Their spirit and their life. And so, um, as always, Bree Council. Hey, we about you know if y'all seen us on, on the radio show. Hey, we trying to we trying to dialogue with these Christian brothers because we trying to bring them to the truth. You know, or bring all of us at least come to a better understanding of things. So I appreciate um, the things that Dr. Eric Mason said. I told him I said, man, the way he was talking. 
to show you. I was gonna come up there and be your bodyguard, man. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, we afterwards we talked with Pastor Mike Pass. I said, well, we got to. Def I don't know if I should say it, but he, he he's one of the only ministries. This man that started reparations in his church. I ain't never. The government can't even do that. You know, I don't know. You know, so well, I just tonight. Well, tonight, tonight I, I felt like I felt like we were ambassadors of the kingdom. Ambassadors, oh, real boy. And you know, we came in here. We we came with the intentions of sitting in the back. And just being a part, hearing the discussion, and it was almost as if y'all just put a spotlight on us, and and we had an opportunity. The pastor of this church was actually a, a brother of a, a brother of ours that we fellowship with, and we've done many outreach uh, uh, events with him. And so there's always been a good relationship and get trust, good trust with this ministry. But when we came in, he just came, found us, man, loved on us. When the event was over, he came and got us, wanted us to meet Dr. Mason. And we got a chance to talk with him and dialogue with him about some of the things going on. It, it led to the Israelite discussion. We took it. Oh, yeah. It, it went there. It's got to go there, y'all. Yeah. It's got to <laughs> go there. And so, um, but it was very encouraging. I just want to encourage all of y'all out there, Israel, Christianity, wherever you at, whatever you in, start seeking the face of Yah. Mm -hmm. And start inquiring of his ways and what his will is for your life and for this time that we're living in. Because we are in a prophetic time. There's a prophetic mandate. The cloud of the Most High is lifting again and is moving. Yeah. And you can stay in the wilderness if you want to yes, sir. and be consumed by them elements. <laughs> or you can get up, pack your bags, and move with the cloud with the on cloud. to the glory and into the promised land. That's right. So uh, uh, be encouraged out there. Wait on, uh, Stay on the wall, Israel. Uh, uh, study, pray, you know, seek out events and things like this. Hear with, have an ear of hearing. Have an ear of hearing. Don't be so quick to to denounce and, and just throw away uh, the baby with the bathwater, have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying because he's speaking. The spirit of Ruach is speaking. And so love y'all. Bless. I, I'll just say this, Israel, just understand this. He's waking up these Christian churches, you know? Um, I'm not looking for every Christian church to come to the Hebrew way. I'm just saying we coming together to dialogue and to come in, in the end, it ain't even the Israelite way. I think Benjamin, you've been saying it, it's a kingdom way. That's so right. The Most High, his Ruach is reestablishing the kingdom, the position, how everything's gonna look. And, and, you know, am I trying to say that I, I'm, I'm supposed to be the hierarchy? I'm not saying that. The Most High established those things. So um, as we've said, our purpose is, and I'm letting everybody know, all in Facebook land, our purpose is to bridge the gap. We're wanting to have conversation. And uh, you know, the fact that we came in, I mean, it was like Kings, you know, one of the brothers, the Christian brother, Grab a seat here. And now he this, waved the registration he fee. Yeah, he waved it. He said, hey, I ain't got to pay. I was like, boy, we was always get to pay. You know, he waved oh, those registration fees. Oh, y'all had, man. man. So, uh, <laughs> the most high, he opened the door for us, man. So, man, I mean, just so let's let's have these dialogues, man. Hey, listen, those that have, once again, re email us at bereecouncil at gmail.com or Facebook page. We want to have the conversations, man. We want to be able to dialogue, man. This is going to be very important uh, for this. Uh, 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 you know, I know we hear this next move of y'all. Really, this is the next move of y'all. His, his people awakening, and we got to have these dialogues, man. So uh, much love. Toda Yahuwah, Kwam Yasharala, Rise Israel. Well, they don't say everything. <laughs> <laughs> Family, let me tell you, you know, Most High is moving, and. Uh, we gotta keep these commandments, keep faith, and 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 let's go ahead on to the kingdom, fam. This ain't, ain't about who's who. This this move that's shaking up everywhere is about a move of Most High. That's right. It's not about it's not about ethnicity in the sense of us only, but it's it's us being put out in our position that we be light, light to the nations. And so, uh, you know, with all that said and done, the conversation that we had with Dr. Mason was in that spirit, in that spirit, we, we, you know, we understand backgrounds, we understand where people come from, and at the end of the day, it's about a kingdom agenda, and uh, we're going to get there, so Israel, keep praying, we appreciate your prayers, family, Berean Council is on the move, we, 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 we're, you know, learning how to connect, and you got to have dialogue, are there any pastors out there, if, you, if you're a pastor, a leader, or uh, 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 any kind of, anyone in the church, you've got to have genuine transparent dialogue i commend pastor mike pat for yeah. having a platform right like this i mean this this guy has created a reparations fund in his church that most of our own people are not even done <laughs> no wild 
while his members are leaving because of this yeah. Yeah. action and, and he's his, taking. And his white members are leaving the church because of the reparations fund he got. And because of the way he's, he's, he's bringing in people that actually speak on real injustice issues. And so that's why we actually came here tonight. And uh, I, listen, there's some great things getting ready to come down the line. And so listen, you got to have dialogue. You got to have sincere, genuine dialogue right. and not shun the hard things to say. And so that was our challenge. That was our, our encouragement as we were encouraged as well by Dr. Mason. But our encouragement to him was to continue to have that open dialogue uh, with, the, with the community and to sit down at the table. And is everyone gonna agree with you? No, everyone's not gonna agree. We may not see things the same, but you gotta be able to sit on the table and identify the things that you don't agree with clearly. And then pray on those things and pray that the Most High eventually bring us to the place he needs to bring us. Shalom. Jay, it's one of my brothers right here. Yes, sir. I haven't met Mr. Alexander, but this is Dr. J right here, man. And uh, Dr. J is a dear friend of ours. We grew up in ministry together. And he's a he's he's a he's a he's someone in the public that's doing some profound work in our yes, community. Yeah. He's been in beating the streets for 18 years. Um, he probably be the next president of the United States. I was telling you, <laughs> next Obama, the boy bad. All right, uh, and, bad. and um, but he he is he's been fighting the cause in our community with what's going on with our young men. Uh, he's a he's a he's a executive director of a powerful program, nonprofit program right here in the city of Gainesville. And so I kind of. You know, I got home, we got home a little late from work and I called him. I said, man, I need you to go with me. And so he came and picked me up and man, we got here, man. So Jay, you want to say something to the people, man? Oh yeah. I, I, I first of all, commending Pastor Pat, you know, uh, Mike for doing something like this. I tell you, you know, we have great speakers that come in our city all the time from all over the world and they don't have transformative conversations like this. I liken this conversation to, to like sinkholes you know, in our community. They've been there all along, mm. but it takes something, you know, transformative to shake it up and cause, cause the ground to open. And when you begin to hear topics like what he was talking about tonight, these things kind of correlate to systemic things as we've seen generationally in our society, in our community, that sure. we've tried everything that we possibly can to find answers for, but tonight you got a chance to hear a, a spiritual application begin to really relate to a natural thing that we've seen you know, our young black men in particular are behind in every statistic negative category that you could possibly think. And so when you begin to hear him talk about how things, not only from a practical standpoint, that has infiltrated the mindsets of black men and the blacks in our community, but from a, a, a spiritual and a doctrinal standpoint of view, man, it just, it makes it more profound. And, and I, a lot of my colleagues are in there. And, you know, and I was talking to the people about this even earlier tonight. I'm going to see them again. And, and, and that conversation is, is the table has been set. It's time to eat. You know, the meal has been prepared. You know, are we going to eat off the same plate? Are we going to, we're going to pretend that we don't have an appetite and go our separate ways. And I think tonight, that's what this conversation has really sparked, not only in, in things that you've heard, but a lot of people that's in there. I, conversations are going to happen tonight at home between yeah. husbands and wives wow. Wow. about convictions and, and things that they've seen. And, and those convictions causes one spouse not to be able to turn a blind eye while the other one now have to reckon with, mm -hmm. have I been a part of the problem? Right. And so tonight was great, man. I'm excited that I got the invite to come out. Uh, kudos to, to the Greenhouse family, uh, Dr. Mason, you know, for the profound message that he, that he talked about. It was very balanced, but it was awakening at the same time for everybody that had to hear tonight. So God bless and uh, I'm glad to be a part of it. That's right, that's right. It's Dr. JJ. And guys, listen. All right, um, we're going to sign out. Look forward to seeing everybody Shabbat this, uh, this weekend, wherever you are. Shout All out. praises. And we shout outs <clears throat> to, I got to go through my time thread. See where we at. I see the fam coming. I see Dominic Delph. Lessons on you, Michael Ross. Shalom. I see uh, Ify Davis, Trenicia Harmon. All right, Al Lawrence. Perez Banks, Shalom, Kim Redman Cooper, Shalom says, Antonio DeSue, Cameron Ramsook, what's up? C.L. Williams, Yosea Yor Yor Yorasho, uh, Morris, Mo, Mo, Rebirth of a Nation, we see you. Dot Lucky, Shalom, uh, Mo, we're going to call you D. Brew. Yeah, D. Brew, we, we, we ain't hitting with that. That's right. I almost said it. I almost said it. <laughs> <laughs> we, that's right. He didn't hit with the that's right, man. Ayana Price, hey, the Psalmist, singing them praises. Yes. 
Uh, I see Dwayne. Teton. Salome, Reggie Norton, Salome, Teton, uh, Chuck Banks, uh, Jerry Minor, Salome, uh, Jamelia, All Praises, Sandra Drummer, Salome, Ebony, Hallelujah, Dale Harewood, JT Preacher is watching. I don't know why you right here. <laughs> Frederick Hayes. I'm to All right, Michael sure. Ross. Uh, let's see that Aaron Jackson, Frederick Hayes, Shalom, Shalom. We love everyone. Anybody else want to shout love. out? Love. Just throw, throw something out. Yeah, any shout out? Anything y'all want to say? Man, go ahead and get the shout out. Chantel Thomas. He's yes, getting yes. ready to send him home now. Yes, he is on the way. <laughs> on my way. On my way home. Uh, and so yes, um, any last words, Banks? Nah, uh, Shalom, fam. Much love. Shalom, we'll catch y'all. We'll we catch y'all Shabbat. Shabbat uh, this weekend. Hold up the banner. Shabbat this weekend. That's Much love. We yeah. All praise to the Most High. All praise. To the most was L in today? L was here tonight. Praise.